Hi, I'm Sophie Wilson, and this is People of the Pool, where we have conversations with those making a positive change in Liverpool's business community. We're known for our music, for our culture, tourism, and of course, football. But what's caught my eye since moving back from down south is the innovation and entrepreneurship that's happening in the city region. And this podcast is about championing just that. I'm blue, not red. I don't have a purple wheelie bin, but I'm still a proud Scouser and I can't wait to share the stories of positive, inspirational change makers with me. In this episode, we are chatting with Kevin Horton and Mark Davies, architect directors of K2 Architects. They're a practice who design the heart of communities. Mark and Kev, welcome. Good morning. Hi. Hiya. Let's start by getting into the background. So, Kevin, you've made Liverpool your home in recent years. What was your very first memory of landing here? Well, I wish it was recent years. It was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my recent, me- well, my first memory of Liverpool was as I started as a YTS worker, as an apprentice in a, in a structural engineer's in Sir Thomas Street called Bingham Cottrell back in the day. And um, on my first day at the office, it was it was kind of quite a, an important time for Liverpool because it was literally the week of Hillsborough. So it was a really dark mm. time, difficult time for a lot of people. And as I stepped out onto the street, there was a, a marionette and a trans guy from the um, pub next door who were collecting money for Hillsborough, you know, and it was this really kind of crazy sort of almost carnivalistic kind of thing going on in, in the, all this darkness that sort of epitomised Liverpool for me, that, you know, people from different backgrounds, different cultures and things were coming together and sort of giving each other a bit of a hug, if you like. Mm-hmm. And that was a really powerful statement that which sort of stuck with me for the rest of my life, I think, ever since. That, that sort of sums up the character of Liverpool and my first impressions of it, really. Mm, that coming together of the community, yeah. but the injection of humour at, at the centre of it Absolutely. Wow. Um, well, tell us a little bit about the story of, of K2, Mark, and your vision and how it came to be. Wow. Okay. So, started my career back in early 2001 over in Manchester. Heard about this fabulous project called Liverpool One and moved back here. I'm originally from, from Liverpool. Um, worked on Liverpool One, and that's where I met kind of Kev. And the two of us worked together producing what I think is still the game-changing project in Liverpool. It changed the narrative. Just for listeners who might not be from Liverpool, Liverpool One is a... Yep. So Liverpool One is a shopping centre. It's a mixed-use scheme. It's right in the heart of the city and it's basically stitched together a new piece of infrastructure right in the heart of the city, right Mm. by the Albert Dock Mm -hmm. on the waterfront. Yeah. So sorry, I interrupted your flow there. No, 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 that's fine. So you heard about Liverpool One. Heard about Liverpool One you know, passionate about this city, was wanting to come back. And this was the door that opened the opportunity for me to come back. And that's where I I met Kev and we worked on Liverpool One together. Capital of Culture came 2008, 2009. And then the two of us said, don't really want to leave Liverpool because at that time that project was finishing and it felt Mm. like it was kind of a migration back out of Liverpool. Um, We didn't want to leave. So 2009, we formed K2 Architects and you know, 13, 14 years later, we're we're still here. Fantastic. Um, Kev, what what qualities do you think makes Liverpool kind of distinct from other cities? Mm, I think I've just said that, haven't I? Yeah. I said that in my story, but I think it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's that sense of identity. It's that sense of like tenacity and individualism that actually characterise Liverpool's ability to stand up to the establishment, its ability to sort of be its own person and not follow follow the crowd sort of thing. That's what I've always been impressed with. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's it's about well, the waterfront. We're waterfront people. There's something different mm-hmm. about the culture here and the people that born or come here. There's this affiliation to the waterfront and that's what differentiates our people. Mm. We're different. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but we're different. Yeah. The pool of life. The pool of life. Love it. So back to the practice then. Um, K2 was behind the design of Digital House, which is in Mm. the Baltic creative community. And again, for listeners who who don't know, that's um, a community interest company that supports the growth of creative and digital industries um, in the Liverpool City region. And funnily enough, Tuesday are based in the Baltic community. Um, Kevin, tell us a little bit about your vision for that, uh, for Digital House and how it contributes to a sense of community in the Baltic area. So 
Yeah, I, I believe good architecture is about holding a mirror up to society and reflecting it back, if you like. And that's mm. what Digital House does to the community in the Baltic Triangle. So you've got this incredible kind of bunch of startup creatives in all different fields and walks of life and things. And it's, it's not about office space. It's about the, the community. It's the social infrastructure that wraps around those people and those workspaces and stuff. And we wanted to kind of like just basically um, replicate that, sort of create a mirror for that. So, so it wasn't just about just, oh, here's another office space where you can run your business in. It was about the cafes. It was about the breakout spaces. It was about that sense of creating a home from home, somewhere that people wanted to be, who could mm. identify with, you know, it's experiential, you know, you've got the cafes, you've got the bars, everything around you. So it was all really about creating that sort of a mirror to that subculture, if you like, mm. which I think we did pretty well, actually. So Yeah. I mean, being based there, it has got that European feel of the cohesiveness of retail and business and residential. Mm. Um, I mean, did you did you look to any European cities for inspiration um, there? We went to London, we went to Berlin, we went to Oslo, and and quite honestly, we kept on coming back and thinking we're doing it better here. Yeah. So I even brought uh, a friend of mine who was uh, number three at ASOS and was in charge of digital experience, you know, and branding and things like that. And I brought her to show the place because I thought it could be a good sort of skunk work sites, if you like, for mm. uh, bigger companies and stuff like that and bring intelligence into Liverpool. And she was amazed by it. She was blown away. She said they couldn't could not do this down in Liverpool. It's, you know, everything's too expensive. Real estate's too expensive. You've got so much going on here in such a small space. It's fantastic. So, and quite often what would happen is, particularly when we went to Oslo and we went to look at a few um, Createc places there, they ended up coming over to Liverpool and learning from us. So we went to learn from oh, them, wow. but they, we didn't learn that much, to be fair. We were doing it already. You know, we, mm. were, we were the trailblazers, if you like. So they were coming to us and learning. So that was cool. Okay. And create yeah. tech being creative and... Digital technologies. Yeah. Okay. So all the things for the future that were going to change our lives. So if you want a good career in the future, either be creative or be digital. So, yeah, fortunately, we're creative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've seen, I've seen your... VR experiences and your digital drawings. There's a massive element of yeah. technology that goes into all of it as well. Absolutely. But just touching on that VR piece, it's been during lockdown and, and after the pandemic, that ability to allow people to connect digitally with, mm. with the space. So the VR has been able to, to stream it during presentations with the team, with the clients and walk them through essentially what is a fly through on their screen. It's been an absolute well game changer, really. Yeah. Yeah. Back to architecture and specifically K2. So your kind of strap line is designing the heart of communities. Um, and this series indeed is called Community Builders, which is why we, we invited you on. Um, what what do you think K2 does specifically to to, to do that? What, why, why is that baked into the heart of, of what you do? I think that's taken us... 10 years to get to this point now in terms of what K2 was set up to do. We didn't really draw it out of ourselves what what that narrative was. And it was our kind of vision and values for the practice, the architecture, we wanted to be impactful and, and basically change the narrative on how we can bring vision and values of the community, what we do as architects together. So, you know, a lot of architecture is how nice the building looks, how yep. beautiful the glass facade is and the, the details. That's kind of a byproduct of what we do. The yep. really interesting bit is the bit myself and Kevin have really focused on is that front-ended piece whereby we will sit down and understand where society's at. You know, mm. the, there's a huge carbon agenda at the moment. The whole sustainability piece is massive. How people want to work or want to live or want to be educated and taking that really to a different level. So we've become more upstream with our thinking and try to reflect, as Kev said, that mirror back to society to understand what they need. So mm. it's been a really interesting, probably 24 months of going through that transition. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of talk about decline and leveling up and things like that. And we, when we were like, so we're good architects, you know, we've won awards at sort of international level, national level, things like that. Um, However, it just, the architecture is a byproduct of what we actually cared about. You know, what we actually found we cared about was people and, and our communities and stuff like that. So what we were trying to say, well, how can we tool our story to empower communities 
if you like. So we kind of took a step back and looked at what architects really, really do. And that's where we saw that it, they're not, we're not engineers. You know, it's other people who are engineers. We're people, we're humanists. You know, we do BA uh, architecture. It's an arts thing. So we kind of, it's about looking at the community, understanding it, learning about it. And like Mark said, reflecting it back again and actually looking for opportunities to actually take back our high streets, take control mm. of them, things like that. Take control of our <clears throat> infrastructure again. The things we all gave away 30 odd years ago to the corporates and stuff like that. Now they've hollowed everything out and they've gone now and they're not coming back. So this to me is a fantastic opportunity to to kind of like rebuild society in the way we want to see it, you know, yeah. which is about us, you know. Yeah. We've created People of the Pool podcast with the support of the team at Bengo Media. Dozens of businesses, large and small, turn to Bengo Media to get their podcasts up and running through their training, consultancy, and even hands-on production. And right now, Bengo Media is offering you, People of the Pool listeners, free online training to help get your podcast launched in 90 days. You'll get insight into the steps to take and some of the biggest mistakes to avoid. So... To claim your free online podcast training from Bengo Media, go to podcastschools.com now. That's podcastschools with an S dot com. Um, so that obviously Liverpool City region is, is a rich seam for this kind of community led architectural piece, I would have thought, with, mm. with the opportunities yeah. there for levelling up and regeneration. Um, what what's what's the sort of best thing about working in the Liverpool City region, Mark, and, and, and also on, on, the, on the other side, what are perhaps the, the drawbacks or the limitations? We're, we're lucky in the city region because where we are, you know, I touched on it before, we're, we're different because of the waterfront. It's always been kind of the, the lifeline to, to the city and its people. And it's a great place to live. I mm. came back here and worked on Liverpool One, didn't want to leave, um, put down roots with my family. We're so lucky. We've, we've got the kind of industrial pass of, of, of the docks and then you push out over to the Wirral. We've got the mouth of the Mersey. We've got the Golden Mile all the way up to, to Southport. If you think of that, the canal, the waterfront, all these elements, the startups, the business, our great universities, it's the best place to be. Yeah. And we've got to get that narrative further afield, which is why things like this, our first ever podcast is really important. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I remember, you know, growing up in Liverpool myself and the Dock Road, just the kind of imagination of, of all the sailors and hookers and spices and cotton and that richness yeah. and then the richness of the Liverpool music scene and all of that inspiring me as, as a teenager. So I know that, I know, Kev, that you've got some some thoughts on that, um, on, the, on the kind of inspiration of... Yeah, of the I think, backdrop of the industrial city. I think you've hit the nail on the head then. It's a really experiential place to live. So I grew up in Southport. That's where I come from, right? And Southport is a nice, safe place, you know, suburbia, whatever. So obviously my first experience, which I just talked about, was a, a bit of an eye-opener for me. But I kind of embraced it. I thought, this is cool. This is interesting. And then another time, actually, I was um, I was with the Ocean U Club and I was sailing out of Bramley Moor Dock, which is obviously now going to be Everton Stadium. But um, it was the night of uh, the World Cup in 1990. And I was in the Bramley Moor pub and it was full of dockers and shippers from all over the world and prostitutes and <laughs> and chancers and everything. And, and it's just that sort of post-industrial landscape, that fact that it's so connected to the rest of the world and the fact that everything is so on the table mm. and not hidden behind closed doors and things like that. It just gives you such a kind of palette of ideas, you know? Yeah. To actually stimulate your creativity. So my view is, as we've talked about before, I think, you know, everyone talks about Manchester being like a hotbed for music and creativity and stuff like that. But so was Liverpool in the 80s, you know, and the Frankie Goes to Hollywood and the Echo and the Bunny Men and Dead or Alive and all these bands that have countless ones. And they sort of matched Manchester pound for pound until sort of the mid sort of 80s and then the late 80s Manchester started to get the edge mm. and I don't think that was to do with the fact that they were better than us I think they just had sort of better leadership at that time yeah. in that space and so they owned that sort of we are the post-industrial 
landscape. You know, mm. this is the creativity. This is where it happens. And if you look at New Order, for example, one of the first bands that didn't go to London to further the career, they said, London comes to us, you know, because this is where we do the good stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of what I would love to see Liverpool doing again, really, because we used to do it. We should be doing it again now. Yeah. yeah. Kev's right. If there's, you know, if you if you're to build on that, our weaknesses, we're not very good at that. I, I don't think leadership has been great and the private sector now have got to step up to that. So I think we've got to go and promote all these great ideas, all these great startups, all these great universities and, and these messages. It's still not getting out there. Yeah. And, and and things like going out to, you know, to Cannes, to MIPIN, which is a big property conference that's that's due next week. It's about selling the city region. And these stories, it's our narrative. It's not necessarily focusing in on these individual things, but the collective of the place, the people, the opportunity. We need, again, to look forward. And as Kev said, if we can grab hold of this leadership piece, then Liverpool can really drive forward. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And of course, Eurovision is on its way. Yeah, Mark. everyone loves a bit of um, Eurovision. So that I was presents... just about to break into song. <laughs> That comes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that obviously presents a great opportunity for the city. Um, what what do you think it'll do? If I can jump in, Kev, quickly on this, we've always the city, the city region has always been great at cultural events. The mm. Giants, Eurovision, we fill our hotels, the restaurants are full. To me, that's the bit that is the front ended piece. What's the middle and long term gain? for the city, the city region, post Eurovision coming? How do we capture that new global audience and bring it back for long-term 10, 20, 30, 50 years and build on that legacy? I've not got the answers to that, but I think we need to be looking in the future post Eurovision. Yeah. Yeah. And I think now as well, I mean, if anyone else asks me if I've got any tickets for Eurovision, I'm going to kill them because I, every single person <laughs> has. And I think it just sums up people's um, impressions of Liverpool, if you like, from the outside that they are, you know, it's the fastest sellout of any mm. Eurovision ever. And a lot of people, when Liverpool won it, a lot of people went, well, that makes sense. You know, that's, oh, I want to go to Liverpool now. It's a cool place to go. And it's just like, put it, it's just another layer of success that puts Liverpool on the international map, I think, in terms of like its diversity, its culture, the idea it's a place to come. Yeah. It's a place where you can be yourself. It's a place where you can have a good time, all those kind of things. So hopefully, hopefully there will be some long-term legacy out of it. And I'm confident there is, so. Absolutely. Okay, well, we're nearly coming to the end. Um, I was just wondering, a bit of a fun question uh, that we're asking all of our guests that come on to People of the Pool. If there was a Beatles song that summed up K2, what would it be? Shall I go first? Go on, help. <laughs> you can, you can't joking. have help because no, no. we've already had that one. Well, I was going to go, go for uh, You Never Give Me Your Money because that's... <laughs> yes, we never oh, get paid. seems to be constantly chasing Chasing bills. money. Right. Um, but I'll go with something because... Oh, nice. I think... Bit of Georgie. A lot of people start their business up and it's, you know, we all think we can do it. It's just an extension of work. It's not. It's a capricious beast. It's like I'm having an affair from my wife all the time. You know, there's a third party in the audience all the time and she has to live with it. And, oh, you know, she of she's proud of me. She's proud of what I do and she's part of it and gets involved and things like that. But, you know, it's that feeling that, you know, you're constantly living with another thing in your life you know wow. piece in your life which is constantly shape-shifting and changing and just drawing you away all because the time. famously george harrison wrote like it when eric clapton was wooing um, yes his first wife that's right <laughs> george is my favorite Patty piece. Pa yeah no mine sophie on a serious note is in my life um it's always people place it aligns with what me and kev do the people we meet and yeah if i had to sum it up it would be that Absolutely fantastic. And um, just before we go, of everything we've talked about, what one thing would you like listeners to take away? Each of you could just do maybe a quick recap on yeah. what you think is the key For me, point. it's ambition. It's ambition of the generation who are coming behind us, the generation who are here now. We have to raise the level of ambition. Um, we need to capture it. We need to harness it and we need to push it further afield. It's a great place. We're really, really passionate about what we do and why we do it. So, you know, have a vision, 
really have a vision, wedge yourself to it and look forward, constantly look forward and, and, and follow it. And, it, you know, we're still here 13 years on after going through a pandemic, after going through ups and downs. It's about resilience, but it's about, it's about desire, commitment and just go for it. So, yeah, that's my advice. Excellent. I think, um, yeah, you said it earlier, leadership. It's really important we get leadership back. People need to be invested in this city. All the ingredients are there to be the best city in the country by a mile. And it should be, we should be so much more prosperous than we are. So we need to be more confident in ourselves, more belief in ourselves and have more leadership, I think, that reflects that. Absolutely fantastic. Very inspiring. Thank you very much, Thank Kevin you. and Mark from Thanks, Plato Sophie. Architects. This is People of the Pool, and with me on this episode are Kevin Horton and Mark Davis from K2 Architects. If you want to find out more about some of the amazing things that are going on in Liverpool City region, go to www.tuesday-media.com forward slash people of the pool. People of the Pool is presented by me, Sophie Wilson. Until next time. <laughs>